March Madness is officially here. The NCAA tournament is set to start, and the Duke Blue Devils are headed to Brooklyn. Let's talk about it. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Lockdown Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. It's so great to have you here with us on Monday, March 18th, 2024. This is Lockdown Blue Devils, your daily one stop shop for everything going on in the life of Duke Athletics. Our podcast brought to you five days a week, available wherever you get your podcasts, and also you can watch on YouTube. Hit that like button, share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to our channel as we're getting so close to 2,000 subscribers, and want to continue that climb. On today's show, Jordan Mann is back with us as he is each and every Monday. We're going to be talking about the NCAA tournament bracket that has now been revealed. The Duke Blue Devils, a four seed, getting set to take on Vermont. So we'll discuss all of that more. But again, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, like this podcast, subscribe to the podcast feed, leave us a five-star rating and written review, follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils, And I'm there as well, at underscore JJ, underscore Jackson, underscore. So without further ado, let's bring him on in. Our good friend, Jordan Mann of the Big J and Little J Show is here with us. Uh, It has finally arrived. It's bracket week all across the country. Everybody at work, in their house, in life, in coffee shops, they're going to be filling out brackets all week long, man. The time has finally arrived. Yep. Uh the March is here. JJ, it's the best time of the year. Obviously, ACC tournament just ended and all conference tournaments ended. But this is the week that we all dream for for college basketball is March and filling out brackets. And honestly, JJ, I cannot wait till the third game of this whole tournament. My bracket's already busted. That's what's <laughs> going to happen just like every year. So I, right now I'm feeling good about it. And then in about, I don't know, the third game of Thursday, it's over. Yeah, it doesn't take long to get those brackets messed up. We'll see games tomorrow night with the first four taking place Thursday right at lunchtime. We get going uh, and then Duke of course will be playing Friday afternoon. I I, I love 68 teams. Absolutely amazing. I will say Jordan I don't love that you have to factor in the third the Tuesday games mind you in these brackets right like I just I, I really hate it and I'm like, I want everything to start on Thursday and not have to worry about. When it was the 16 seeds, it really didn't matter most times because they're not going to knock off a one seed. But when you've got some of those last four teams in and we're talking about 11 seeds and bigger programs, uh, that's kind of my soapbox when it comes to filling out brackets. Yeah, I mean, perfect perfect example of that, JJ. My brother and I were talking about it yesterday, last night, and Virginia. Virginia, obviously – ACC, obviously, and people hate Virginia the way they play and stuff, but Virginia, what they they have, J.J., if they beat Colorado State, I could see them beating Texas round one, and then Rick Barnes, they have round two, and Rick Barnes doesn't do good in March. So it would be hilarious if Virginia was a play-in team, J.J., just like Syracuse a few years ago in the ACC, and they go to the Sweet 16. You're like, oh, my God, Virginia in the Sweet 16? But if Colorado State wins – and I think Texas handles them easily in round one. So like you said, the play-in game makes or breaks your bracket. It could throw everything off. And so I just uh, – I don't like it. I don't like it. But it is college basketball. Those games are going to be amazing. I'm glad we get to watch the games. I just wish the bracket wasn't necessarily associated with it. So uh, I digress. Let's talk about Duke. Duke basketball, a four seed in the south region. Uh, Houston, the one seed in the region that Duke will be playing in. The Blue Devils will play 13 seed Vermont on Friday evening at 7 Eastern time from Brooklyn. The number one broadcast team with Ian Eagle, Bill Raftery, Grant Hill will be on the call for this broadcast. Uh, and Duke gets going on Friday. What did you make of the matchup, the bracket, oh, Duke, everything? What did you think? Yeah, I figured Duke was going to slip to a four seed just Based off losing to NC State uh, in the first game that they played in the AC tournament. Look, it's just, it is what it is. But 
honestly, Vermont is a team that they're interesting, right? Like you look at their, I looked at their record. I looked at the teams they played. They beat College of Charleston pretty single-handedly. They smacked Toledo, who finished first in the MAC by almost 30 points. But then they lost to Virginia Tech, a team Duke beat at Virginia Tech. They lost by 22. So it's just you don't know what you're going to get, and we'll d- uh, dive into it later in the show. But I do like the first round matchup for Duke, and then. The bracket, I mean, we'll see. Like we just talked about, it's March, so you never know. Houston's obviously the one seed in this region, but weird things happen, man. And Nebraska, maybe they can knock off Texas A&M round one and then give Houston a run for their money. No no kidding what can happen. Nebraska has never won an NCAA tournament game before. We're reminded of that every time they make it into the big dance, and so maybe this will be the year that they can knock off Texas A&M and then have that matchup uh, with Houston to see who's knocked off in that regard. Duke, of course, taking on this Vermont team. The 5-12 matchup is Wisconsin and James Madison. The winner there would play the winner of Duke and Vermont. That game would be played on Sunday of this upcoming weekend. Of course, Duke has history with Wisconsin going back to that 2015 National Championship game. Although it might not be the Badgers, it might be JMU, or who knows, maybe Duke doesn't beat Vermont. Maybe they're upset. Uh, this is why it's our, our favorite time of the year. Yeah, I mean, look, that would be crazy. Uh, in my video breakdown that I did last week of Duke's loss to, Virginia, uh, to NC State, I, it's gained some traction. But in that video, JJ, I'm wearing a JMU hat because my little brother went to James Madison. So I did not know that was going to happen. So if you ever look at my video breakdowns, like, why is he wearing a James Madison hat? My brother played there, so that's why I'm wearing it. I did not know if it goes round two and Duke plays JM, JMU. Looks like I'm psychic, but that's just a coincidence. But, um, yeah, Vermont, dude, look, what Duke needs to do is just get back to their old ways of crashing the board against Vermont. Vermont is undersized. Their leading rebounder is their wing. He's averages five rebounds a game, and that bodes well for Duke's size. So I think this could be a good Sean Stewart game, honestly, JJ. I think this is a game where you see Sean Stewart have 15 or more minutes for Duke off the bench. Let's see what he can make happen with the Duke basketball team, and let's talk a little bit more about this matchup, a little bit more about the tournament seedings and all those things. But first, we need to take our first time out here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Locked On Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. They've got a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Constantly finding ways to make the process easier, LinkedIn has also launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions making the process quicker. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Locked on Blue Devils here today is also brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. This week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan, highlighting a new team Across the sport each and every week, a team that pushes it further than the rest, just like all of the new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. These teams picked out by our friends at Nissan, and I'm loving them highlighting the Auburn Tigers, my alma mater, of course, as the Auburn Tigers can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves after claiming a top spot in the SEC. As they knocked off the Florida Gators in the SEC Tournament Championship, Auburn set to make a run in the NCAA Tournament, quite like that Nissan Pathfinder. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Let's move forward here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. J.J. Jackson alongside Jordan Mann from the Big J and Little J Show. We're talking about these brackets. Uh, We're talking about seeding and what took place after conference championship week. We learned from the NCAA committee that five bids were stolen 
from conference championship week. Teams that were not expected to make it into the big dance, but get the automatic berth from winning their tournament. One of those was in our Atlantic Coast Conference when NC State won five games in five days, knocking off the North Carolina Tar Heels, so they are in the big dance. That didn't shift a lot of people's thinking, however, and where Duke would end up right at that 3-4 seed line, Jordan, and ultimately Duke ends up with that uh, with that number four seed. Yeah, I mean, shout out NC State, shout out Coach Keats, Spare him alum, baby, Spare him <laughs> Panthers, and uh, that was that was remarkable. Like at the end of the day, they did beat Duke, but it's always awesome to watch history. And five games in five days is tough. And shout out to those guys. I'm hope, hoping they can represent the ACC well against Texas Tech. But yeah, look, Duke's the four seed now. Duke made their bet; they got a lie in it. But I still think Duke's fine. I think they. I think what they have to do is figure out the defensive side of the ball, but offensively. Your guards have been bad the last two games. It's been apparent last two games with UNC and NC State just inefficient from Roach, McCain, Proctor. Those guys got to get going in the first round against Vermont. And I think with the matchup with Vermont, they'll have open looks against these guys, and they just got to hit them because they did, they had open looks against NC State, JJ, and we just did not hit any open shots. There were four, obviously, one seeds. So there's four of every number when you're building out your 64-team bracket. Uh, Duke, of course, comes in at number 13 overall. I do love that after it's all said and done, the NCAA Tournament Committee will present 1-68. to 68, Every team in the field seated accordingly for you to know exactly where they were, and Duke was number 13, meaning the Blue Devils just barely missed being that last three seed. Instead, Duke is the top number four seed, and uh, again, they're paired with Houston, who was the one seat in the South region. UConn, Purdue, Houston, and North Carolina are your four number one seats. So uh, I did find that interesting, Jordan, that Duke was just on the outside of making that three seed line. Uh, really stunned that Kentucky holds on to that three seed line ranking. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm not a bracketologist. I'm not a committee member. So I'm not always sure how they get to that mark. Yeah, I mean, look, what I've learned in the last month, JJ, is no conference is happy with March Madness and how it's done, except for the Mountain West. Because I don't know how the hell the Mountain West had like six or seven teams. <laughs> because every year in the every year going into March Madness, like this is the year Mountain West conference is deep. Well, guess what? As a sports better that I am, in the last previous March Madness, JJ, they've been knocked out like four out of six games, the first round matchups. Like Boise State always loses, Colorado State always loses. San Diego State's the only one from that conference where I'm like, okay, they can go to the Sweet 16 at any moment. We saw it last year. But I understand the Big East up being upset, ACC obviously in some aspects, and even if the SEC wants to complain about seeding. And then even Iowa State, they were complaining all of a sudden about them wanting the one seed and how Carolina got it. I mean, that was that was insane argument because UNC deserved the one seed. I mean, what are we talking about, Iowa State? Yeah, it's tough uh, from the Kentucky perspective, once again, getting that three-seed spot and then other four-seeds uh, being Duke, Alabama, the Auburn Tigers, who just won the SEC tournament and don't find a way to get up, up above where Kentucky is positioned. You know, yeah. uh, they, these conference championships must not have carried a whole lot of weight from teams that actually went on to win. Yeah, I think that happened last year too, JJ. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's like recently it just seems like the conference tournaments don't carry as much weight as it used to. I felt like if you won a game or two in the conference tournament, you're on the bubble. That puts you over the hump. But we've seen that teams that were on the bubble win one or two conference tournament games, then lose. They're still out. So I don't know what happened, but hey, it is what it is. And at the end of the day, we just got to play through it. Yeah, a long week back in Durham as uh, the Blue Devils obviously uh, pretty quick trip to uh, the nation's capital in the ACC tournament before being beat by NC State. The team all gathered last night. They're on campus to watch the selection show. Dukes put out a couple of clips from the team dinner. Uh, you hear Jeremy Roach talking about taking on Vermont. John Shire seems uh, pretty excited and optimistic about this game for the Blue Devils. Our friends at FanDuel have Duke fluctuating between a 10 and 11 point favorite. We'll be watching that all week long as this goes. Uh, but uh, I'm ready to see Duke hit the practice floor this week, really lock in, and uh, I don't know, create a sense of urgency because if you need it, it's now. The season is over. 
if you lose. And this is where we really need Duke to be playing at their absolute best. Yeah, hopefully it's a lot of uh, shell drill, a lot of defensive schemes that they're going over, uh, a lot of two-on-one, three-on-two fast breaks, but emphasis on the defensive side of things. It's just – and hit open shots. Like, just get your shots in, but focus defensively because offensively everything looks good. You just got to hit the open ones. And so that's just where I am with this team, JJ. It's been frustrating, obviously. A frustrating finish because I've been – tooting the horn of Duke this whole season and saying everything's okay and everything's okay. And I feel like I'm the last one on the Titanic and then they lose two in a row and then everybody's like, see, they're soft. And so that was the thumbnail of my latest breakdown that Duke is soft, but I was saying that more so for the NC state game because I was disappointing their effort. And so hopefully they realized that they had a tough film session about that NC state game and they come out pissed off against Vermont. Entertain me with a Caleb Foster conversation here. We'll hear more from Coach Shire as the week progresses when the team actually lands up in Brooklyn. I have a few days there uh, in the venue to get used to their surroundings, the backdrops, all the nine uh, that goes into getting ready for the NCAA tournament. If Caleb Foster at any point over the next six games, let's not even just say this week uh, with the games in the round of 64 and 32, should Duke win and continue advancing, what does that look like, do you think, for the Duke basketball team? We've seen it in years past. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult than you think trying to insert someone back into the team. But for this Duke team in particular, all season long, Coach Shire was letting us know that, look, I've got six starters. We saw guys miss a few games here and there, and it took you a little while to get your spot back in the starting lineup. But, I mean, it really felt like the minutes were evenly distributed for the most part amongst those six players. what Where are you at in, in Caleb Foster and all of this? Yeah, with it being March, JJ, like I don't know his progression uh, with his injury, but say he is back, say, after a round of 32 or something. And you don't want to plug him in like he, the old minutes that there were because you're going to mess up whatever's been working to get you to the Sweet 16 at that point. The best way to plug him in in that situation is foul trouble, where you have your back against the wall. You need Proctor to come out because you got two fouls with 11 minutes to go in the first half. You need somebody to steal those minutes, and that's where you put Caleb Foster in. You don't go back to where there, he was playing 25 minutes, Proctor was playing 25 minutes, and trying to balance that. You just go with what you're going with, what's working, and then when adversity hits with foul trouble or an injury, then you plug Caleb Foster in to get those minutes to help you. If – he is 100% healthy in this hypothetical. I'm hoping he is healthy. I'd love to see him back out there on the floor for the Stoop team. I think Duke is still uh, capable of making it out of this weekend without Caleb Foster. Uh, they've just got to be able to get out there and execute, make their shots, uh, all those things. Let's talk a little bit more about Vermont and have some final thoughts from Jordan Mann ahead of this week's NCAA tournament after we take one more timeout here today on this episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Locked on Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our friends over at Amazon. The Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights, in-depth analysis, and more, Fire TV offers viewing experiences with Smart TV as well as the Fire TV stick that you could plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or this college basketball tournament starting up, you want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV also recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and lots more. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Amazon Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Amazon Fire TV is a proud sponsor of Locked On Blue Devils. Final few moments here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. JJ Jackson alongside my pal Jordan Mann from the Big J and Little J Show. I do want to also let you know about the college basketball a Locked On Bracket Breakdown Show that's now available on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, as well as our feed. We uploaded it to the Locked On Blue Devils feed, so you can listen as well. Experts Andy Patton and Isaac Shade will break down their brackets 
and discuss everything you need to know to fill out a winning bracket and prepare for this year's NCAA tournament. Find the Locked On Bracket Breakdown now on Locked On College Basketball Podcast wherever you get your podcast. It's the best tournament. We know upsets are going to be happening. I love people that will fill out their brackets uh, by picking mascots or team colors, or uh, it's becoming a trend online to let your pets fill out your bracket for you, right, with treats and that sort of thing. I love how creative we can get with the sport, Jordan. Yeah, for sure. I mean, (laughs) that's always, if you want to get clicks, put your dog in there and just get them some dog (laughs) treats. You're going to get guaranteed a hundred likes at least. (laughs) It's a cheat code for all you out there, pet owners. Oh, man, I love it. All right, so Duke's taking on Vermont on Friday in Brooklyn. Um, geographically, I, I guess Vermont might have a little bit of an advantage here. Uh, look, Duke fans are going to turn out for this game, as they always do uh, when Duke is up there in that Empire State. Uh, excited to see the Duke crowd on hand, and hopefully they're able to watch a really big win for the Blue Devils in the round of 64. Uh, we mentioned it, Vermont, the Catamounts, out of the American East Conference. What do you see? And tell us a little bit more about some of those observations with their team, Jordan. Yeah, so I'll give you a little sneak peek of the video breakdown. I'm doing a little scouting video breakdown for Duke, and I'll have it out hopefully later tonight on uh, Monday. But what we're going to do is have a transition defense. So what Duke struggles with is transition defense, and they uh, – that's where they're very good. They give 1.25 points per possession. That's in the 99th percentile. They're 71% from two in transition and 40% from three. So you got to rim run on the as a defender, and then you got to find the guards on the perimeter. And for this is the recipe for success because in their win against College of Charleston, they had 21 fast break points. And their 26-point win against Toledo, they had 15 fast break points. And then – Against Virginia Tech, where they lost by 22, a team that Duke handled on the road, they had three fast break points. So when you take away the fast break, they're, they struggle to create offensively. And that's something Duke has to do is take away their transition offense. But that's something Duke has been struggling with is transition defense, as we saw against UNC twice this year and NC State last game. How much of that is effort from the defensive side? It's – it's not as much effort in transition. It's more of lack of communication. It's more of that's my man, but you don't need to necessarily go to your man because you need to stay the, to the man that's closest to you. And there's just some sort of miscommunication that's going on with Duke of not knowing where to go in transition and the lack of communication. And that starts with the guard position. That's the people that need to be talking the most are your team captains and then the guards because they need to point out to where everything is so everybody else, the big men, can keep running to the rim and then find their guy next. So that's where it starts with. Well, hopefully we can clean that up a little bit because I know we're talking about that North Carolina game in Chapel Hill in particular. That was a big thing on those turnovers. Duke not able to get back on defense. It was a big part of your film breakdown against NC State as well. And, yeah, if you've got a team that wants to get out and run a little bit, uh, I think that's going to be easiest for Vermont to score the ball too, right, on some of those open, clean looks that they might have as well. Uh, offensively, what do you think it'll take from Duke? The best three-point shooting team in the conference all season long, not making shots in that quarterfinal matchup against NC State or really in the final home game against North Carolina. Uh, what does the Duke offense look like? I mean, I think they just got to keep shooting. And I think that they will have their looks against this Vermont team. Vermont is not very – their guard play is not very laterally – they're not laterally quick as Duke's accustomed to against ACC play. They got a, a guard or two that might be okay uh, foot speed-wise. But Phil Pawski has a quick first step compared to their post players, the rim protection. And he also has two or three inches, so that's beneficial to flip. So I think Duke's going to go for flip early. And then they're going to look for kickouts to McCain and Proctor and Roach on the perimeter when Vermont collapses. Because Vermont's going to have to collapse on flip. They don't have anybody that can guard him one-on-one with size-wise. So there's going to be a help side guard that's going to dig. And then when that happens, Duke's got to kick. And then Duke's got to hit open ones out of that. That was the best part of the NC State game, right? Is is that, my goodness, throwing it down low into the post to Kyle Filipowski – he was money and on his game. You couldn't stop him and scoring at will. Uh, but then when Duke needed shots to fall from the outside, they just weren't falling. So um, hopefully they can knock down those shots from the outside. Hopefully Kyle Filipowski uh, can be as efficient and consistent and effective down there in the post because uh, I think that will really help Duke, knowing that if the shots aren't falling, you do have 
kind of a, a score that you know what to expect out of and flip down low. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, guards dictate what you do in March. You, they can make you or they can break you. And you saw that against NC State with Duke. Kyle Filipowski and Mark Mitchell were awesome. Filipowski had 28-14, but Duke lost that game because their guards didn't come to play, whereas DJ Horn and them stepped up for UNC, UNC, NC State. So guards hit open shots and help flip out. Then I think Duke wins round one against Vermont. The NCAA transfer portal opened up today as well. Something to be mindful of. Uh, we haven't quite seen anybody from NCAA tournament teams put their name in there, but across the sport, a couple of teams that just barely missed the NCAA tournament declined invitations to the NIT. Ole Miss coach Chris Beard was one of the most vocal, talking about, I need to be able to go out and recruit. I want my players to be able to go into the portal if they so choose. And so something kind of to watch there from the Duke basketball perspective, players that might be exiting or conversations that could be had. Although I guess you got to get to the end of the year to know who's returning and not coming back and that sort of thing. Uh, worth noting, Kyle Filipowski's twin brother, Matt, who's a sophomore at Harvard, uh, did enter the transfer portal as well. That was one of the main names that I had noticed already today. At Monsanto at, at Wake Forest noticed that he had entered the portal as well. Yeah, I mean, that's just the modern day of college basketball now, JJ. I think they need to push that window back until after March Madness. I think it's kind of BS that you're punishing the teams that made the dance and then teams can cancel the NIT or decline the NIT invite so they can get ahead on these right. guys from the mid-majors that didn't make the March Madness and get those guys to be an integral part of next season. So they got to change that. But, yeah, I would do the same thing if I was Chris Beard. I would decline the NIT and i try to get a leg up for next year. Smart coaching, man. Smart decision yeah, sure, making. Yeah. Uh, but you got to find a way to fix it. 100%. You got to find a way. And the best way you can find a way of your mistakes this past year is go ahead and have a head start for next year. And that's what these coaches are going to start doing. You think we uh, – is it possible we see some players from NCAA tournament teams this week whose names end up in that transfer portal? Uh, I mean, technically – That's there's a guy, crazy look, man. <laughs> technically, there was a guy from NC State, but he quit the team at the end of the season. But So okay. he wasn't part of an ACC tournament. But, uh, I mean, we saw that with Duke, Malik Murphy. You know, Malik Murphy, Duke's quarterback, played for Texas, and he had to opt out of the college the game. playoff yeah. because of just the, the window. And right. so, you know – it. It's not insane. I don't think you'll see like a, a starter or like sixth, seventh man. I'd see like a, a Jalen Blakes of a Duke team for somebody else. I could see entering the portal in March Madness, but it would be, it's a weird, it's a weird day and age in college basketball, man, and college sports in general. So who knows? Give us one final plug, a promotion for your social media account and uh, the Big J and Little J show. Yeah, Big J and Little J Show. It's where you can get all your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, wherever. And then my personal YouTube is jman underscore, J-M-A-N-N underscore. And doing video breakdowns, podcasts on there as well. And the content's growing every day, JJ. So I appreciate you as always for having me. Absolutely. Let's go get some Duke wins this weekend, man. Next Monday, I want the season to still be going on. I'm not ready for postseason talks with you. Oh, I'm with you 100%. You got to win the first one until you win the second one. So yes. it'll be Vermont. Yep. See you next week, Jordan. Thank you, man. See you, brother. All right. That's Jordan, man, joining us here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. Do us a favor. Go check out all of his great work. Uh, follow and subscribe to the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast wherever it is that you get your podcasts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like this video. Share it with your friends. Thanks so much for your support, as always. That's going to do it for our show here today. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.